want to know why is divorce so difficult? So we're going to look at kind of two categories. The first being what it takes to get married. So when you get married, you know, a lot is involved. So you have to plan the wedding, coordinate all the vendors. Um, for some of you, it means setting up church time or maybe courtroom time. Um, flowers can be expensive, very expensive. Uh, the reception hall, invitations, and then you don't want to forget the license and paperwork. So from there, what are some of the issues? So you're going to be juggling family issues and your emotions. So family issues being where am I going to sit my cousin who doesn't get along with my aunt? Uh, so just seating charts, all of that can be emotional time. Um, Maybe you're getting cold feet. These are all things that come with, you know, setting up your marriage, getting, getting all that um, lined up so that you can walk down the aisle. And then the next portion is the whole process can not only be costly financially, but also emotionally. So again, um, lots of emotions are involved from your family, your friends, uh, the one you're about to marry and then financially it can be very expensive. So now we're gonna look at the next category, which is getting divorced. You'll kind of notice that it's a pretty similar process in the sense that there's a lot involved. So you have to navigate through the divorce process, which looks like um, you know coordinating the filing of the pleadings with the court, subpoenaing records, um, talking to witnesses, potentially having witnesses testify at trial, um, possible depositions, so whether you're gonna depose the opposing party in preparation for trial, so you know what they're gonna say on the witness stand before you get into the actual trial, and then going to court. So that's a lot involved with getting divorced. Then you have the next step, which is the same exact thing as it was when you got married. It's extremely emotional. Um, you're not only juggling your emotions, but then family issues are involved with it. And then again, it can be costly both financially and emotionally. Um, I know the divorce process, they say, is in fact one of the most emotional times in your life. So whether that be um, divorce, death in a family, or I think they even say moving. So one of those three big times in your life that it can be extremely emotional and you know keeping those emotions even keel during a divorce process is extremely important so that you can maneuver through strategically but it's not easy so things to consider that's why divorce is so difficult how does the divorce process end basically it ends in one of four ways so this first uh, option for a divorce to end is when you guys settle so what does that look like? You have to settle all issues. So whether that be um, property, and property and debt division, um, child support, parenting plan, such as custody, and we'll go through all these as the slideshow progresses, um, but all issues, attorney's fees, maintenance. So if you can um, settle all of those issues and come up with a full settlement agreement then we would draft settlement documents and file those with the court once your settlement documents are filed with the court we would then wait for the judge to s approve read them over and approve them and sign them once the judge approves and signs your settlement documents a judgments entered so that's one of the ways the divorce process can end. Now, please keep in mind that even when you, the judge enters the judgment, um, yes, the divorce process ends, but there's still a time period that you have to keep in mind that the court maintains jurisdiction over your case. Um, and you have to essentially wait out that little time period for your divorce to actually end. And usually that's 30 to 40 days. Um, after the judgments entered um, and that time is you know used for post-judgment matters so for example 
if the opposing party wanted to try to set aside the judgment, they have that little time period to do so. Or if something arises and you find out that maybe the other side had a hidden asset that you just discovered, you could file a motion to try to set aside that judgment saying, hey, I found this hidden asset, um, this judgment should never have been entered, we need to discuss this issue. So the court provides a little time frame for that. So that's one option to um, in the divorce process, which is through settlement. Option two is when you take your case all the way to trial. Generally speaking, only 5% of cases actually go to trial. Um, but what you do when you go to trial is both sides have an opportunity to present their evidence and tell their story, bring in any potential witnesses, uh, things of that nature. And then at the conclusion of trial, um, the judge will make a decision and enter a final judgment. Sometimes a judge will make a decision right away. Sometimes it could take several months for a judge to make a decision on your case. So something to keep in mind if you decide to take your case to a trial, it could be um, a long time after trial for you to get a judgment. It just depends on how busy the judge is and when they get around to really um, taking in all of the evidence and uh, testimony that they listen to at trial and making a decision on that. The third option is when a person goes into default. So default is like when a sports team forfeits. Um, basically what it looks like is, um, let's say you hired an attorney or you filed this case and you have served the other side with a summons once that person is served with a summons, they generally have 30 days to respond in some manner. If that person buries their head in the sand and doesn't respond, just completely ignores the proceedings, that person is in default. So if that person is in default, your attorney can set up a hearing for you, um, known as a default hearing, and you can give a quick testimony about what you would like the judge to enter for um, all of the issues such as property and debt division, child support, custody, attorney's fees, all those things. So you can testify to all those things that you want and then at the end of that uh, the judge will enter what's called a default judgment and the other side will have no involvement because they have not responded in the manner that they're um, required. So that's the third option and that's by default. The fourth option is when um, one or both parties dismiss the case. So um, it, usually if the parties decide that they're going to reconcile, so in a divorce, if they decide, you know what, I think we can make this work, we want to stay married, they can actually, both parties can file um, a voluntary dismissal of their case. So once that voluntary dismissal is filed with the court, the judge uh, will read it over and approve it and sign it. Once that happens, the case is done. It's been dismissed. So the, those are the four ways to end the divorce process.